Hi everyone. So today I'm going to be picking and getting a Quickset Smart Key Generation 2 lock. Before I get to that, I wanted to, number one, um, show the insides of the lock, but I also wanted to demonstrate why this lock is somewhat um, interesting and unique, and that is the rekeying functionality of it. So um, right now, this is the current key to the lock. You can see there. Um, I've got a whole bunch of keys for this, and none of these other ones are going to work. Now, this lock, in order to rekey it, all you have to do is use the current key, turn it 90 degrees, and then use this reset tool, which is just a piece of metal. You could use anything. You push it in this hole, you hear a click. Now you pull the old key out, you put a new key in. You turn the lock and you're done. Now this is the new key and the old key no longer works. Now there, there's actually some complicated mechanisms inside the lock that make this work um, and that is also what makes this lock um, a little bit more difficult to pick but you can see why that would be kind of a popular um, feature of the lock. It's very easy to rekey, you don't need to take it apart and repin it. Um, you can get a bunch of these and you can key them all the same to any key, even an existing key that you already have. Um, and if for some reason you lose your keys or you, um, you know, give a key out to somebody and then decide you want to change the locks, it's very easy and quick to change all the locks. So next I'm going to have the lock taken apart uh, and I'm just going to show um, how that rekeying functionality works and then um, the different pieces that are inside. Before I get to the part where I pick this, I wanted to um, talk a little bit uh, in more detail about the difference between generation two and three, and then just kind of how this lock works in general. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just talk a little bit about uh, a gen two smart lock, which is what I'm going to be picking, or a gen two smart key, um, versus the gen three, which I also have one right here. So um, the thing that you will notice on the sides here, the difference is the shape of the sidebar. I'm actually going to take the key out of this one so you can see it better. So the Gen 2 sidebar is it's this one. Uh, it's triangular. You can see that. And the Gen 3 sidebar, which is this one, is square. Um, so that is the primary difference. However, the other thing is that the Gen 2 sidebar, um, you will see the springs are underneath the sidebar. They are pushing it out. The Gen 3 sidebar, the springs are, you can see they're being held in by these black bands, they are pushing it in. So this is a reverse sidebar. Um, because this sidebar is square and the hole is square and because it's a reverse sidebar, um, but I think primarily because of the shape, you cannot tension the Gen 3 like a normal lock. Um, and that's because the sidebar does not get um, pushed in by tensioning. It just binds along the side of this square notch. So to tension this lock, you have to take a shim and actually stick it through this hole right here where they put a ball bearing for anti-drill. You slide a shim in there along the side of the sidebar and that forces the sidebar in and it provides tension. You can also tension through the reset hole. Um, in the, the next version of the smart key, the, um, the SC1, uh, which is a Schlage key way, they actually do not have that ball bearing hole. And so I think you have to tension through the reset hole. I've seen videos of people doing it. So that's the Gen 3 though. Uh, I'm not going to be picking that one today. I am going to be picking this Gen 2. So you will see me tension it just like normal. Um, so you know, clearly it's got a sidebar, um, which is different than most uh, normal locks. Um, it does still have pins in it, um, but it's also got these sliders. So I'm going to take this apart real quick and show you some of the insides. So here's the sidebar right there. You can see the, the bottom of this sidebar. It's got the two notches for the springs, um, but then this bottom part, this is what interacts with the sliders. 
This part right here comes off. This is the reset carriage, and this is uh, what allows you to rekey this lock. So if you have the key in, you turn it, and you insert the reset tool here, it actually pushes this carriage back. Now none of the sliders inside the reset carriage are engaged with the pins anymore. You can pull the key out, you can put a new key in, and then when this goes back, um, the pins will be in a different position. They will interact with different notches and the sliders, and now you've basically just rekeyed the lock. So I'm gonna take this off so that you can see these parts um, separately now. So first I'm gonna talk about this. So you can see there are the pins. Um, they are currently lifted, but if you pull the key out, there's where they're at rest. And you can see they have those fins on them, which I discussed. Those interact with um, the sliders. So they will fit into right there. You can see the notches in the upper part, okay? So that's where those fins are gonna fit into. Um, you can also see this big groove at the bottom. These have to be lifted correctly for this groove to be completely clear. This is what makes it so that you can't push the reset carriage back unless the key is in. Okay, so that's, that's pretty important. If I pull one of these out, I will show the other side of it, which is the part that interacts with the sidebar. So you can see right there, those are the notches that interact with the fins uh, on the pin. But over on this side, this is what interacts with the sidebar. So there's the true gate that the sidebar has to fall into in order for the lock to turn. But then you can see that there are false gates, um, little tiny indentations above and below that. So as I am lifting the pins, and they are moving the slider up and down. Um, you'll hear all the clicks. They kind of feel like serrations. That's the, uh, the sidebar kind of popping into those false gates as everything is lifted. So um, not a traditional pin tumbler lock, no shear line, um, but, you know, some interesting mechanisms here. Um, one thing I will note is that, you know, you probably saw up here this housing, um, this part of the housing right here is plastic. Uh, the metal on these fins is kind of thin. Um, these notches are a little shallow. So this lock I have heard is actually very easy to just force open if you just put a screwdriver in and turn real hard. Um, when I was picking my Gen 3 or, or learning how to pick the, the Gen 3, um, I've actually you know stuck a shim in the side and broken part of it. Um, I think I lifted one of the sliders so much that it just like popped off um, the, the fin and the lock and um, jump to the next one. The key wouldn't work after I, I did that. Um, so a lot of like weird little fiddly things uh, in this lock that I know people are not big fans of, but um, interesting to pick um, for sure. Feels very different. Uh, and you'll see that uh, in the next part when I do pick it um, and you'll be able to hear all the serrations and, and kind of see some of the weird uh, counter rotation movement as um, things, you know, move out of false gates and into the true gate. So uh, with that, we'll get it up into the vise, and I will go ahead and pick it. Okay, I've got my Quick Set Smart Key Gen 2 in the vise, and I'm going to go ahead and pick this. So again, Gen 2, I can use a regular um, top of keyway tension method. Uh, I do not have to do anything weird like shim the sidebar or tension through the reset hole for this particular version of this lock. And the keyway is pretty open, so I'm just using a regular um, offset hybrid pick here. I also have a deeper hook I may use depending on how difficult it feels to get to some of these pins. probably hear all the clicks, clicky feedback um, out of this lock as you flip through those false gates. And the 
these are they're hard to you can't jiggle test them I guess is is what I would say um oh there we go they do have different feeling depending on whether or not they are set but it's really kind of subtle in my opinion okay let's go ahead and get this So to take this apart, I have to take this clip right here off. Oh, and you can see that's what was holding the core into just this housing right here. Um, now on this, I'm going to turn it back. You see the sidebar pop back in right here. There we go. Sidebar's in. And I need to grab my key. Okay, this is the key this was almost set to. Alright, so there we go. So I've got to take this one clip off the back here. And move this ring. Okay. And now I can take it out of this housing. Okay. So here is the sidebar. And you can see the springs in there that were pushing it out. So right there, that side of the sidebar, um, the one on the furthest side away from my tweezers, is what goes into the gates. And then the little gaps are for where the springs fit in. So I'll put that down. Okay, now I'm going to flip this upside down as I take the reset carriage off so that I don't lose any of the sliders. Okay, so on this side, you can see the pins, and they have like those little fins on them. Uh, and those are what set on this into those grooves on the left-hand side. And then the part that interacts with the sidebar is actually on the reverse. So I'm going to take all of these out. They are all identical. I don't have to keep them in order at all. Come on. There we go. Okay, so let me get these a little up close. I don't know if there's any Thing weird that you need to see in here but no nothing special just the groove for the sidebar um, which you can see right there okay so here are the sliders in a little bit more detail kind of hard to see because the lighting that makes it a little better okay so on this side, this is the part that interacts with the sidebar. You can see kind of the false gates right there, and then the one true gate, there's um, false gates above and below. So if you overlift this, it will um, catch on the sidebar on the other side. And then this side right here, those are the little grooves or notches that interact with the fins. This big notch right here um, is what actually keeps you from being able to, well, it, when when the reset carriage um, is not when these are not set right, the reset carriage won't move because there's notches, or not notches. There's um pieces of metal that stick out that will fit into here that kind of big groove on this side. Um, that's what allows the reset carriage to slide back and forth when you are actually resetting the lock. So I think you can see the false gates and the true gates on all of those. 
but that is it. Um, picked and gutted. Uh, not too terrible. Little weird feedback, which I think is why people feel like this lock is more difficult than um, pin tumbler, but uh, you saw pretty pretty quick to open um, regardless of that. So not too bad. Um, again, quick set, smart key, uh, generation two, uh, picked and gutted. All right. Thank you.